it's it's a difficult question to answer because it's a it's an ongoing challenge it's an ongoing battle making sure that i take care of myself It's like I can think about, so did you take a break? Did you eat your lunch? Which sometimes it's at my desk, I confess that. But other ways of how are you shutting this off and how are you moving on? It's reframing my role is so important to help me re-energize. And so when I think about that, you know, like I was saying, when someone comes, when they're leaving a relationship, there's so many problems that need to be solved, things that need to be figured out. And so it's really easy to say, you know, it's my job to make sure this person gets child support. It's my job to get them a TPO. It's my job to get them custody. And so just remembering, I don't actually control whether they get child support. I don't actually control whether they get a TPO. I don't even control what the facts are that they walked in with. Mm -hmm. So reminding myself that I, my job isn't to get them child support per se, it's to take the little part that I do control and do my best with it. I think right now in this current time with COVID, I've explained to clients that I feel like many of us are on half empty mm -hmm. um, because that capacity to fully renew ourselves is missing. So I think particularly right now, you just got to be really careful about disconnecting from um, whatever type of work you're doing and having some downtime, whatever that may look like for you, and renewing as best as you can. I know that in this field, there's a pretty high burnout rate for people who work in, 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 in this field. And recognizing that self-care is not sort of an extra thing that you sh might want to try to do, it is a core component of your job. Mm -hmm. So it is, it's, I think of it more like I'm investing in my future clients because if I don't, it's not, yeah, so it's less of like a, I'm taking time for myself. It's like, I'm taking time for my future clients because if I don't, I'm not going to be here to help them mm -hmm. um, because I just won't be able to. Mm -hmm. And so I think about it that way. And when I do have the free time, it's really important that I spend time with family and the exercise and the sleep are essential to mind being able to be a successful practitioner. I'm pretty textbook. Like I try to eat vegetables and I try to exercise and connect with my loved ones. And I have to be very purposeful about it and very mindful about it because if I don't, then I will sit and, you know, read my email and see if there's anything else I can do. And, you know, oh, well, oh, I can be watching something on TV and say, oh, well, this could be helpful for such and such. And it's like, exactly. Jocelyn, you're supposed to be just watching TV. Whenever I feel that I am in a state of experiencing compassion fatigue, I try my best to combat it on the front end and doing things that fill my cup. As I think this is extremely important for those who are working in any helping field. With regard to just basic self-care um, and how we deal with ourselves in terms of compassion fatigue and self-care, the more we know about who we are and how we work as individuals, it's like gold. The State Bar does provide six free counseling sessions for lawyers every year, so I've taken advantage of that. It's something that before COVID I didn't, you know, I felt like I didn't have time for, but, you know, we I was able to hook up with a a virtual counselor. So having that person to, to really give me some accountability and who has some expertise in this um, is, has been really helpful as well. So she's given me some great tips for, you know, how to structure my day so that I'm um, making sure that every day I do a little bit of self, some self-care activity. I think it's important to have a good team around you and to be able to talk to different people because I think everybody has a different perspective. Um, mm -hmm. So that's number one is having a great team. Um, 
that you can go and talk to. The other one is getting a good amount of sleep. Knowing that I have, um, knowing that I have uh, several different sets of people who do the exact same work that I do, or are just as passionate about the work as I am, and being able to, knowing that you're a phone call or an email away, knowing that um, if I have a difficult situation that I notice is developing into a trend, even, even during COVID or, you know, during the winter months or during the summer months, knowing that um, I can keep record of that and that there is a place that I can go where I can speak with people who are going to give me some, not just um, good answers, but very honest answers because they do the same work that I do and they've experienced the same challenges. Mm -hmm. That's been, that's been very helpful for me. Well, one thing that I do is I don't, I don't do it alone. So I have a good network around me. I've got really supportive. My office is really supportive and, and we're um, um, supportive of self-care. Uh, we regularly talk about how we're feeling, what we're doing, and, and we're very mindful of how heavy the, the work can be. And you know, knowing that, that that does take a toll on so many professionals. For me, it's always about rechecking um, and going in there and taking a deep breath and saying to myself, I've got to do the best job for this patient. And sometimes that means doing it over and over again until you get to a better level. Maybe not ever perfect, but at least to a better level for those patients. It's really tough to keep going when you feel like you're, you're doing everything you can and it just doesn't get somewhere. Mm -hmm. And it makes you wanna shut down and, and sort of not, not wanna keep taking in more problems. But if you remember, all I need to do is my best. Like I can control these things and if I do my best with those pieces, I've done something.